What's up everybody, it's George Gable and this is part six of The Autoload, creating an amazing expandable logic template. Now in part five, we went over screen sets and why it's important to set up screen sets. You have a screen set for recording, you have a screen set for mixing, you have a screen set for editing. In part six, we're gonna fine tune this and customize it with some color coding and some custom icons and some key commands that are gonna help this along. Check it out. Okay, we're back in our auto load here and we're gonna look at some customization. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna unlock my screen sets because I do want to make some changes on the visuals of it. And what I want to do is I want to right click and go to the track header components and I want to color code these. So I'm going to put the track color bars on this. And that allows me to see these a little bit more clearly. Blue for audio, green for my software instruments. So now I want to do the same thing. If I go to my screen set two, you can see that all of my auxes and buses are the same color and I want to be able to differentiate them. But I'm not going to do that necessarily here. So I'm going to unlock this screen set as well because I do want to add the color bars to this. For some reason, you'll notice that it's starting on audio two. That's because I must have scrolled up at some point, but I locked it in that position. Lock is a pretty powerful tool. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I can see audio one. And then I'm going to do the same maneuver I did before, which was to go to the track header components and go ahead and add the color bars here as well. And then I will also go to screen three and do the same thing. So I will unlock it, add those color bars, and you're just saying, well, why don't you just do that before you duplicate it, dummy? Good question. So now I'm back at screen set one, and I'm going to further this by doing this for my buses and my auxiliaries. I want to color code them so they are more identifiable. So I'm going to click X, which opens up my mixer. I'm going to make sure that all are selected. And you'll notice that as I go along here, this is a little finicky. So you do want to make sure that you only have one thing selected. So I'm going to go and find my buses. Right now it's giving me my auxiliaries first. So let's go ahead and start with our two auxiliaries. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and say, I want to assign a channel strip color to this. Now, right now it's yellow, but because this is my interface inputs, I'm going to make it blue. I want it to stand out. And now I'm going to select my four effects. And because our buses are yellow, I'm going to make these a different color. Since this is an aux, let's make it close to a blue. Okay, that's good. And then finally, my side chains, I'm going to make them orange. Side chains feel like an orange color to me. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay, then I'm gonna go to my buses. I'm gonna leave them yellow, but the effects return bus, I am going to change to be a different color yellow, just so it stands out a little bit more. That's a little bit too close to the orange. Let's go for this. Okay, I'm gonna click the X, get rid of that. And now when I go to my screen set two, you can see that my color scheme clearly shows what's different in these two mixer windows. I didn't pick the prettiest color combination, but I'm a musician. I'm not a interior decorator. You pick the colors that you want that work for you and you'll be happy with them. Now one more thing we're going to do to kind of color code this all together is we're going to look at our multi timbral instruments and we're going to provide some custom icons for them. Maybe the software instrument that has your multi timbral properties is like contact or omnisphere or something like that. And so there's an easy way to kind of get these icons. Uh, contact and omnisphere are both standalone products. So if you open up your applications window, you should be able to do a get info on there and grab those graphics. Let's check that out. So I'm going to hide logic for a second. And here I have contact. So I'll take this contact icon. You can do a get info on this. This icon, there's a couple ways you can do it. One way is if you click command shift four, you can actually just grab this by taking a picture of it. Therefore, it's a screenshot. So let's go back into logic and see how we can paste this in here. Now, I probably already have this in here, but really what you're doing is you're selecting this icon, which is going to be our first multi temporal instrument. And and I'm going to go to custom icons. You can see that I already have this in here. If I wanted to though, I could just go right to the desktop and show you how this screenshot just goes in by me just dragging it in here. And there it goes. So it's a very simple way to get that custom icon. And it just gives you this custom look. And therefore you can just change those icons. You're like, oh, this is my Omnisphere, whatever. That way you're setting these up the way that you want to. Let's make the first two contact and the second two Omnisphere just for the sake of art. 
argument, but it's pretty simple to get your custom icons in there and really customize this thing and make it look really cool for your own needs. So if you really want to customize this further, you can be like, hey, you know what? I don't, I don't want my multi timbre instruments to be green. I want them to be another color. So you can always go and right click this and assign a track color to these. You know, let's say I want my contact to be this color teal and I want my omnisphere to be dark blue so go ahead and do that but I really have a terrible combination of colors here don't follow my color coordination here it's not happening so now we really have kind of taking this another step. So again, you can see that I kind of got back into Logic. I still have my desktop behind me. And if I just hit number two on this, again, it's just gonna bring me back to where I was. But you must note that you are unlocked now. So you should, first of all, go to bar zero, go to track one, or if you want your track always to be on the first mini instrument, but make sure you can see all your tracks. Now go ahead and lock that screen. Let's go to our screen set one. Same thing, let's just make sure that we're in the beginning and that we can see this here. We're going to go ahead and lock this screen as well and follow suit with the third screen set lock that puppy as well and now we will save now it's really starting to look pretty good exciting except for my color coordination now there is one last thing we want to look at before we throw in the towel on this and that is how do we call up these instruments from the back end and that is going to be a key command pulling it from the back end and not just doing new track so let's take a look at that if you look at the track menu you will notice that there is this option for other and that is other new tracks with next instruments new tracks with same instruments now i use both of these all of the time but what i want to do is i want to set up a function command to access these so I'm going to go to the Logic Pro menu, go to key commands, go to edit assignments, and I'm going to type in new track. And you'll see new track with next channel, next MIDI channel, that's F6, and new track with same channel, that's F5. So to set these, which you can see they're clearly already set, but what you do is you click the learn by key label. So I would do this hit function F6, and that establishes it in there. In fact, I'll take it out just to show you. So function F6, boom, and you do the same with the other. Now I'm gonna give you the two scenarios that you're gonna use these in. Okay, let's say I want another audio track. Now, you're probably used to going to uh, new track, new audio track. That's not how we're gonna do it. All you need to do is hit your F6 key, and it's going to pull the next from the environment and the background. Same with the software instruments. You do that, F6, and there it is. Now let's take a look at the next with a same instrument. And this really goes to, depending on how you track. Let's say I have some sort of percussion software instrument, and I wanna do one round of timbales and then another round of the shakers, but I don't want them to be all piled on each other. So that's where the F5 comes in. So basically what F5 does is it gives you another instance of that same track. In other words, it's the same track, but you can put multiple regions on this. So I like using that for that reason. So those two key commands are kind of important. I would say the F6 is more important because that is what's dialing up what's in your back end in the environment. Now it's fair to say you can keep on tweaking this auto load to be fully customizable for whatever it is that you want. There's lots of things you can do. You're like, hey, I want this feature, I want that. Hey, it would be really cool if I could do this. By all means, do that. But this exercise is really to show you this environment in the background and how to set it up so when you're pulling from the environment versus just doing new tracks that are going to stereo out, it is way more organized this way. Furthermore, you're setting it up in that tab system, the tracks, auxiliaries, buses, and stereo out so everything is routed the right way so this concludes part six of the auto load series in part seven of this series we're going to go back into the environment tweak some outputs maybe look at some external midi objects and then we're going to populate our aux effects with some standard effects that we could use at any time we're also going to look at some io assignments so when we are using our aux effects everything is labeled properly and then we're going to take a look at how this is used as always, if you like this, give it the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click that bell icon to be notified of future episodes and comment so we can dialogue back and forth. I've been having some great conversations with you. I'll see you on part seven of the Autoload. Till then, this is George Gabriel Music.